Season 2, Episode 6. And today, we're off to the metaverse and we're meeting Dr. Javier Mendoza, who is a doctor, specialist in gastroenterology, and also a senior medical advisor at AI Medis. And with that in mind, let's dive deep into the interview. Welcome, Javier. It's such a pleasure to see you. And I, and I really enjoy meeting people like you in general. Like just now, it's been nearly two weeks from the conference, from MedTech World. And I, I could sense the energy from you. I met you online before and we had some opportunity to interact. But now I actually met you in person. And it's so beautiful to have this opportunity to go to a conference. So I'm really grateful that you've come all the way to Malta to to my tech world and I'm, I'm just uh, really curious about something we were planning to do this podcast originally in the metaverse but this time round only this time round it didn't work out but but i am very hopeful that with some more time and some more energy and also i need to actually buy the vr glasses because i didn't buy them yet so i need to buy the oculus either oculus i'm not sure which one maybe i'll ask you for the best model um, but I introduced you as uh, as one of the leading doctors here on the metaverse. But I want to go deeper than that, Javier. I want to I want to understand what's your digital health journey. How did you end up on the digital health voice in the first place? Like what do you, what brought you here with us today? First, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Stefan, and thank you for the invitation. I think one of the things that I love most is to talk with uh, people that I admire about digital health. So, yeah, let's go. My journey, I'm a medical doctor in gastroenterology, and in 20, uh, 2005, uh, so many years ago, nearly 20, I was in a hospital start and it was electronic health records. And I said, oh, it's cool. I don't have to think about what my colleagues write or my horrible letter. Uh, they will understand. And we can do things with that. So it's like uh, we said, uh, data, information, acknowledgement. Hmm. And I have that on mine. In 2016, I moved to the Netherlands. And that give me something precious, that is time. So I'd say, okay, that's the moment. And I did a digital health master in Barcelona University. Since then, I work part-time as gastroenterology and part-time in digital health, always learning and always uh, looking at the future. Wow, I mean that's quite that's quite interesting because uh, even like it's been like t- twenty like two thousand and five, so really like uh, some time ago, and all of this intrigued you. And now, especially in Malta, there's like a, like this this massive trend, this massive move as well, even more into electronic medical records. And now we are looking as well a lot into analysis of data on electronic medical records we're trying to see and we're also like looking at the challenges of of analyzing the data you know because you know you might have a doctor who might decide to you know do be be very structured approach because they know what it means to put this data and get it analyzed data or there might be doctors you know who just love long form text and they they type they type a whole novel or, or a couple of words in the in the in the text part of the the record so there's going to be these very interesting challenges and uh, and i'm extremely excited but javier you mentioned electronic health records but wh- where did the, the metaverse come in like uh, how did you kind of how, how did you become a leading voice on the metaverse on and the healthcare metaverse especially like what, what happened there i'm really curious Yes, uh, I would say Metaverse is like the triple jump uh, into the future of healthcare. So I love and I think digital health technology is helping healthcare. Uh, And Metaverse, it's like a a tool with a join of technology. So we will have there for sure artificial intelligence. We will have blockchain, uh, smart contract, NFT. And I think that will be a part of the future of healthcare. 
uh, it's a concept. So some people uh, try to mm, do consultation with me in the metaverse. I said, not now, soon. So I think it's an it's a open door to uh, change things and uh, technology is going to help uh, the system, the patients and the healthcare professional. So yeah, l let's do it. Uh, I think there's some points that metaverse can help. First, it will be medical education. And I think it, we need a change about that. Mental health, please, it, it's time to change that. Um, digital twin will change uh, many concepts that we have that. We talked many years ago, personalized medicine with digital twin, I think, we will get that personalized medicine. And uh, maybe the, the last one will be uh, telemedicine. So after pandemic, the telemedicine company and consultation are going down. So maybe the future will be the metaverse. So sit down with Avatar and some people criticize that. Uh, it's a pixel. Uh, Avatar can be uh, very realistic or even hyper-realistic. I always say the same. Uh, I'm a Spanish speaker. Why I cannot talk with a patient in Colombia or Mexico and try to help? So um, technology go faster than low and there's gray zone, but the future will be uh, part of the future of healthcare will be metaverse. Wow. I mean, to be honest with you, like when I, when I look at the metaverse and you mentioned mental health, I could... Uh, the, the interesting thing, at least about the metaverse, is that there is an opportunity for truly immersive experience where you truly change your environment, at least for a temporary amount of time, this massive change. And I still remember trying the very first version of Quest when our very first version of the Oculus, where the resolution was so low um, that you could actually kind of see the boxes, you know, the pixels were like really, and and I and the funny thing is that when I was using the the glasses, I remember kind of like you you can like jump off a very high, like you just jump, shoom, and and I remember that that experience was a bit nauseating. It kind of it made me a bit dizzy, and but then later on, I tried a higher quality, a higher quality virtual reality set and the experience was so much better i didn't feel that bad because the resolution is so good that it's extremely close to what we experience in real life so even this so even my my brain could adjust much much better to something that was possibly low quality because of the earlier version of the technology to something now you know that First of all, you won't have like this wires dangling at the back of your head, kind of trying to move and that, but you'll actually have like a really, really immersive experience. But then again, it's it's also cool to not only just have truly immersive, but also to have like this additional layer over you through augmented reality, which gives you like, like an additional, like amazing effect. Like this week, I just saw a very interesting video of a guy wearing uh, augmented reality glasses. I can't remember which model exactly. But instead of him having to buy two or three monitors, he simply wore the glasses and he had five monitors where he could visualize. So the, the I mean the potentials are simply endless. But but Javier, like one big curious thing that I have about you is have you started practicing with the metaverse in mind? That means did you have the opportunity to meet patients? I know that you mentioned that. You mentioned something about this already, but did you have opportunity to converse? Did you have, did you go for a conference in the metaverse? Like what was your experience so far of the metaverse? And maybe you could tell us what glasses you have. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just really, really curious at this stage. Sure. Maybe uh, uh, first say uh, we have to build the concept of metaverse. So uh, we have to say that metaverse is not virtual reality. So uh, maybe one big part of the uh, metaverse will be augmented reality. Actually, people is talking about next year, Apple will jump to metaverse through uh, augmented reality, uh, and that will be a game changer. Um, I have a, a Oculus uh, 2, uh, Meta Oculus uh, 2, 
Um, yes, uh, I have not seen the patient still. Um, there are these uh, a few companies, uh, I made this uh, and some more. Um, maybe we have to change uh, the name, legal uh, issues, but it will be like a second opinion first to try to set uh, all the uh, consultation uh, in the metaverse. Um, but yeah, I have been in conference. There, there are a few uh, movements. Uh, I know that it's uh, uh, amazing. This ophthalmology in the United States that do conference. Ophthalmology? Oh, wow. Okay. Ophthalmology only nice. do conference a bit in, in uh, uh, vitreous and retin surgery. So it's a specific one speciality and inside the speciality one part and do conference every month uh, in the metaverse i will uh, wow. uh, start to do uh digital health talks uh, in the metaverse this is a project mm. that we're gonna uh start. I, should, I should definitely join i should definitely join yes and um, yeah I, I hope you will be one of the first uh uh guest in this uh, digital health yes. uh, in the metaverse Cool. Wow. So, so that's really great, um, Javier. And I am personally excited to to get started. And and that when when I like when I reflect even more of this, and you mentioned mental health as well before, I can really imagine, you know, treatment of specific mental health disorders happening in the metaverse. There is so much opportunity there. It's it's incredible. Like even just for example, and and here I'm inspired by the film like Ready Player One, where you have this guy who is in a in an environment which is definitely not conducive to health. It it looked like a junkyard. There are houses on top of each other. It looked like a mess, and this guy all of a sudden is immersed into another world, where he had the opportunity to build a better future for himself and for his family that really struck me now now i know that sometimes it's good to kind of not be too detached and to come back at some point you know not to kind of stay solely in the metaverse and and there is like really an interesting balance that um, is being done there but my question to you is javier you know we're both doctors and how would you convince a doctor to get started in the metaverse like how do you get them on board what do you do do you do you have like this in you have moments to engage in conversations with them? like how do you convince healthcare organizations to at least start exploring the metaverse like what what makes what makes them say ah i should invest time and energy into the metaverse because you know how busy we are like what's the opportunity there uh very interesting. Um, we have to explain. I, I don't like very much, maybe in English and, or in Spanish sound different, but uh, evangelist. We have to explain. But it's the same of artificial intelligence that we always say is not a black box. So it's a, a, a machine that has seen millions of images and say, this is a polyp in the uh, colon, when you do a colonoscopy, that it was one of the first uh, algorithms uh, approved by the FDA, for example. And second is trust. Trust, I think, is a key word. We have to explain, and many times I work uh, uh, part-time still as a gastroenterology, and uh, I'm working doing colonoscopy with anesthesiology and say, uh, did you work yesterday? I say, no, I didn't. Oh, you're lucky. Well, I didn't at the hospital. I was in digital health. What is this? It is is the first word. So we need time to jump. And it's so wide. It's so big, the, the feel of digital health and the metaverse that I'm quite sure that some parts uh, will be useful or interesting for uh, our colleagues. And I always use healthcare professional, but it's not only for medical doctor. There are nurses doing amazing jobs of uh, physiotherapy, uh, psychology. Would, would, would you talk about mental health? I was very surprised this article that said that people with depression or acidity prefer to talk with a bot, artificial intelligence, that with a person. Because no, the no. person can judge me, and I prefer to talk with a bot. 
So, wow. wow. Yeah, we have to think so about yes, that. Wow. wow, I mean, I, I, this is like, uh, I, it's, I mean, in fact, I remember like a couple of interesting um, surveys being sent about this and where one part of the world prefers speaking to a chatbot, especially in uh, Japan, if I remember well, whereas in Europe, we still kind of prefer to speak to, you know, to, to a doctor or just to a healthcare professional, to this one-to-one. -one. But even I wonder now how that survey would change after the pandemic. But it's, it's extremely interesting what you just said. Like, where I think we really need to advocate for digital health in those moments when someone gets curious, even if they know nothing about it, but there is an opportunity there. There is an opportunity to really make a difference and get someone like, like maybe not hooked, but at least get someone interested. And when they get interested, they want to explore, they want to read, they want to watch videos, they want to listen, they want to read books on the topic. And they say, okay, this is something that could really change the way I do my work. And as a result of this, everyone around them benefits, you know? So I really applaud you for taking the moment and you know, even in something as casual as some talking with a gastroenterologist during a medical procedure that you might be doing to communicate with him during work. So that's, so that's really fantastic. And inevitably, I, with this, I kind of go to my next question where I say, if someone had to come to you today, Javier, and he would, and this person would ask you, how, what is the future for digital health and medtech? How do you see the future evolving in the next five, 10 years? You already hinted at this, but how do you see it evolving further in your, in your opinion, you know, in, in your experience? In the future we have in front of us is uh, amazing. And I want to say that it's not only technology, Actually, I'm not a tech guy. I mean, I don't have the last uh, Mac or, or an iPhone. Uh, I'm here because, uh, as I said, uh, I'm a medical doctor from the last century. I, I finished uh, medical school in 1994. Uh, so I'm here to bring values that we have before. So we have to look at the future and uh, accept the help that technology give to us and at the same time bring all the values uh empathy uh ethics and uh i see the future like technology helping us in our day by day and on the other hand it will be very precious it will be amazing sit down in the same room with an internal medicine doctor and that's not me that see you globally and explore and explain things to you because he has time to focus on you. That will be painless to sit down with him and talk uh, to him. He will not uh, type. He has not a computer in front of him. He look at into your eyes, listen, and have time to explore, uh, do a, a, a strategic for your diagnosis and plan a treatment. I see that the future technology helping us and bring all that values that we learn. I'm quite sure you also uh, learn in your school medicine. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's definitely evolving to shed and medtech. And uh, I think it's, I'm really, in fact, I'm like, honestly, like really curious to how our future, I'm excited. Um, I know that we're always going to have changes, but I'm really excited uh, with how the future of digital health, med tech, health tech, you know, you name it, will will evolve and how we will become, hopefully, you know, better healthcare professionals. Better because, not only because of technology, but better because we have so much more information, we'll have even more help, we'll be able to scale up much faster, you know, if we want to help thousand, 10,000, 100,000 patients with our actions. There's like some immense opportunity there. But believe it or not, Javier, we're getting close to the end of the podcast. You see when, you know, time flies when you're having fun. And I have like one small challenge to you now. You have one minute, Javier, to raise awareness on any topic 
of your choice. So you've got one minute. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be healthcare. It can be any topic of your choice. And with that in mind, the one minute is yours. Go for it. Um, if I have to define why I'm a medical doctor, uh, I will say only a word is uh, help. And uh, if I have to choose uh, a word that uh, bring together um, technology, um, healthcare, um, the future, it will be ethics. So we have to uh, do our best um, to bring ethics in the future of healthcare uh, and digital health. Wow, lovely. That was definitely less than one minute. So thank you for keeping to the time there. It's amazing. And the fact this is one of the first times where I've heard uh, equality, you know, I've heard climate change, but you know, ethics, actually this is the first time I hear. So it's really great that every time I ask someone to do this, it's always something, usually it's always something incredibly unique. And that's like this, the magic of this one minute. And with that in mind, Javier, I would like to thank you for being here with us. Gracias, amigo. And uh, I would like to encourage our audience who are listening to us right now or seeing us and uh, to, to join our, uh, to look us up and on the Digital Head Voice on any podcast, podcast player of your choice. We're even on Audible, we're, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you name it, even Spotify. And I was very appreciative of the fact that we had like some really cool Spotify unwrapped. And we did, up to now, we've done more than 600 minutes of content. Pretty cool. We've, we've been quite productive this year. And also you can find us on social media through the MedTech Word page where you can just look up MedTech Word and you'll find us there as well. And with that in mind, thank you. And I'll see you at the next interview.